go. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, John Hansard Gallery talk with um, artist Larry Achimpong. This um, talk is connected with the online exhibitions of the gallery and uh, which is supported by the Barker Mill Foundation. Um, today we'll be joined by um, Associate Professor of um, Public Health, Dr. Nasreen Alban, um, who will be engaging Larry with um, kind of questions about his new and extremely timely um, art piece, Reliquary 2. I am Dr. Preeti Mishra. I am a historian at the University of Southampton. Um, just a kind of quick introduction to Larry and his sort of work, and we'll get him to talk about his work in much better ways than I could. But um, Larry is a celebrated artist who has presented his work in London, New Orleans, and Accra. He engages with questions of um, sort of identity, of, of, of being an immigrant, of, um, of, of being a person of color um, with uh, contemporary um, kind of issues that um, come up in our lives as people of color. Um, this particular piece that we're going to be talking about is called Reliquary 2. It has been especially commissioned by the John Hansard Gallery's new digital program. The film is a meditation on a period of separation between Larry Achimpong and his children. Um, where the artist observes his own familial narratives with the pandemic and the trauma of forced isolation during unprecedented times. Speaking directly to his children, Reliquary 2 is an archive of contemplative prose and a historical record during what has been a surreal and challenging period for many. The film features animation by Bhumi Olya Sebikan and is a continuation of the Relic Traveler series um, that started in 2017. It is a multi-site, multidisciplinary speculative project that builds upon the post-colonial perspective informed by technology, agency, and the body and narratives of migration. Mixing visual poetry with generational healing, the series explores past, present, and future through narratives of Pan-Africanism and African diasporic identity in relation to colonialism, post-colonialism, and heightened nationalism of our current times. Um, when we look at this um, video that really query to is, um, it's as, as a person of color when I looked at it, um, I found it deeply resonant. Um, and one of the things that seemed to be very clear about what you were trying to do here is to not just speak of this as a moment of exception, but to show how the pandemic has amplified struggles already present in immigrant and minority lives in Britain. And I was wondering if you could say something to um, why this piece of art felt um, sort of so necessary in this moment. What were you trying to get at? Absolutely. Yeah. Sure thing, Priti. Um, and thank you for the question. I mean, I guess what's interesting um, about, about the work was that I, I I wanted to I wanted to write something to to my uh, children for a while, um, having produced um, the the work Finding Fun on Free with with David Blandy in 2017, where um, our avatars had been searching through this virtualized environment for the lost plays of, of Franz Fanon. Uh, in the in the third film in in, in the trilogy, we that th there is a kind of the, uh, yeah, I guess the, the monologue kind of opens itself up to us talking to our children, talking about the various conflicts and, conflicts and experiences that they would have, but it was still kind of within a certain aspect of, of fiction. And at the time, um, I, was, I, I, I was quite inspired by the, uh, the writings of Ta-Nehisi Coates, particularly uh, his book, Between the World and Me, in which he talks a lot about his experience from uh, an African-American perspective of being a black male and, um, and uh, the various levels of, of complexities of, of, of violence um, that he has gone through and is going through and the fear uh, that he has for his son, but also the hope for, for the future. Um, so that certainly was a point for me in which I, it, it, it just kind of dawned on me that, you know, 
I've been making work that explores um, familial experiences. Of course, I've worked with the likes of my mother. Uh, I'm, I'm due to hopefully work with my, my father soon. We've been talking about doing something specific in terms of our own relationship. But, um, you know, I, I, I would say I, I feel I have, you know, quite a fun relationship with my, with my children. We do a lot of things together. But I've been telling myself, you know, for years that I, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to genuinely write a letter to them just to kind of to talk to them about um, about life, a little bit about life, a little bit about my uh, my fragility, um, the, the 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 spaces or areas where I feel I I may be lacking in, but I, I I'm trying my best within this uh, within the global West to to yes. to not only survive but also to um, to show them uh, a, a way of, 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 of living and, and openly through mistakes as well, maybe as well. And I guess, you know, the, the, the instance of, of, of COVID, um, which of course nobody could have foretold, just, you know, it, it kind of hit almost like all of a sudden, particularly the lockdown. Um, and personally, I was at a point in time where I, I'd moved out of London. I, I, I used to have a studio at Somerset House Studios. I was living with my mum at the time. I'd been living with her for around seven plus years. And, um, and, and I knew at some point I would, I would be working and living outside of London because it's just too expensive to live in. Yes. And, you know, I found a studio and, uh, and it's just literally around that period of time of moving where, you know, the lockdown was, was announced. And so there was mm. so much in the way of, um, should I say, uh, you know, tension, stress, anxiety uh, about, about this disease that um, I, I felt very, I felt powerless in a way, actually. Yes. You know, on, on the one hand, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm talking to my mum like constantly day by day saying, look, like, don't go outside, like, because I can drive now, I can come to you and give you supplies or whatever you need or, you know, and then, and then talking to um, Hayley Jo Rose, whom, whom is the mother of my children, but also a collaborator sometimes within, within some of my works, just talking to her about, you know, even before Boris Johnson had mentioned, you know, closing schools, you know, talking about the, making a difficult decision of keeping our, our, our children at, at home because uh, my, my eldest uh, Sinai is, uh, is, is immunocompromised. He, has, he suffers uh, very badly from asthma. So, you know, as a parent, having witnessed uh, someone so close to me uh, experienced an asthma attacks before and being aware I guess really because I'd been reading for months about you know coronavirus and finding out different things and then even I remember at a point in time actually when uh, because I guess you know doctors and scientists never had the data but the advice at the time was that you know if you had asthma there's no reason that you know the virus would do anything and then all of a sudden like from one day to another actually it does do something to you um, there was so much so much pressure, so much that still is there. But you know, I was I was in 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 a in a new place in a part of England where I was uh, kind of hoping to 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 build a next stage in in, in my personal and, and you know uh, uh, professional career. But I also I wasn't able to really go anywhere, so mm -hmm. I had nothing but time really. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I guess that that. That's a bit of my answer to, to your question. That's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you for letting us into why, let's have a look at why you were doing this. And a lot of that resonates with quite a lot of us, um, the sense of um, fear, um, sense of powerlessness, and the sense mm -hmm. of kind of interruption, that you, know, you have all these huge plans of shifts mm -hmm. and changes and how they get interrupted. Um, Nisreen, um, Alvan works on um, public health and has recently been quite a vocal voice in thinking about the impact of COVID, particularly on um, kind of people of colour. Um, so I was wondering if, um, I mean, you had a few questions, didn't you, Ms. Dean, about this kind of idea of fragility and, um, and what it was doing to our particular bodies. 
um, and how the government responds and how the journalists respond. So, do you want? Could you? Say yeah, about absolutely. That? Thank you first for inviting me to take part in this. Um, the privilege of actually watching um, Larry's work. Um, it, it's um, it's really a, such a rich piece <laughs> of art with so many themes um in it um you know i don't, I don't know where, where to start really things were, were really kind of thinking heavily about you know particularly in my uh with my different hats on you know like larry so i'm a mother of children um uh, i've also been um ill uh you know with the covid 19 symptoms and, and then uh, subsequently subsequently with long covid having fully recovered from it so directly affected by the virus but also with my professional hat on mm -hmm. in public health and epidemiology and, our, and my kind of long-term interest into inequalities uh, and how it shapes health of people. So I want to I want to really pick up on uh, the first thing because that's what you've picked up first, Pretty, in terms of um, as a person of color, you really identified uh, with the themes. And one of the things that were in the film, uh, obviously, was the, 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 this theme of you know this high this virus attacks people, black people, uh, high mortality in black people and how this is a legacy of racism. And I found, um, you know, it's, it's quite, ref it's, it's quite, um, I think that that's what the, pa the pandemic did something, at least for people in my profession, is that we really um, have faced, uh, we, we really were forced to face talking about racism in a direct way uh, in public health. I mean, previously, it wasn't like that. We talk a lot about inequalities, socioeconomic inequalities, uh, deprivation, uh, but not so much in, in terms of, you know, racism is a public health problem and we need to openly tackle it and talk about it. So I, I really found it really striking um, that the film, you know, put it like that, you know, it's a legacy of racism. And, and, and I do agree uh, because when the, when the first, when the pandemic started, uh, you know, all of, lots of explanations were coming, uh, trying to have some scientific explanations why um, you've got high mortality in, 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 in people yeah. who are in yeah. black people. Yeah. Well, actually, um, the most, um, uh, the explanation was clear, at least to me, it is that, um, you know, racism was at least, you know, part of the underlying um, process here. So um, maybe just, just to talk a bit more and, or what's your, you know, comment a bit more on, on that, um, Larry, you know, was this something mm. that, was it a surprise? Was it a surprise that you saw this virus affecting black people uh, really badly more than others? No, no, if, I, if, if I'm honest, uh, not really, uh, Ms. Reen. I mean, of course, when, when, when I was, uh, you know, writing the letter and, and doing the research on, on, on particular numbers, I, I had a feeling, uh, regarding what I would find due to, um, you know, issues re regarding racism and also uh, class. Um, you know, I've, I've lived in the area of uh, Tower Hamlets most of, of my life, uh, and also uh, uh, Dagenham in Essex. And, um, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the treatment of people of color and especially black people uh, over, the, over the decades of my experience of, of living in, in those places. Um, I, I, I've seen racism within the, you know, just the streets to then school play, playgrounds, uh, education and, and, and back again. So um, when you see these structural, you know, inequalities that, that that are constantly taking place, and then there is the um, there's then the threat of a uh, 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 a killer disease that's out there, and uh, particular members of society, particular groups uh, whom are already not being looked after, whether that's you know mentally, socially, economically, and so on. Then of course it it, it makes it only makes sense that they're going to be in in in, in uh, a stronger um, situation of, of danger, really. Um, so all, all I all I needed to understand was from that point, uh, other than that that fact, which I would be aware of, was the actual numbers. I think the numbers, in a way, kind of blew it away for me. Was you know the fact that you know was it three percent that black people make three percent of the, the the population in the UK, yet we're was it four or five more times, you know, four more times likely to 
uh, catch that. Like if you put those numbers and you just say that out loud, it sounds ridiculous, it, you know. Um, and and all of these 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 things strung together. The you know Brexit, the you know the the at the time the kind of uh, impending uh, presidential election, uh, and 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 so on. In, in the United States, that it, it felt like there was so much to try to even, not necessarily, um, should I say, uh, not not necessarily kind of like just consolidate because there's there's far too much to try and you know you know tick boxes. It's not really about that. It's really just about it's, it's about talking about feelings, right? Um, that I. I and, and also taking on, on, on the point that uh, you mentioned, Nisreen, you know, I, I fell ill with, with symptoms actually as well. So I, whilst I'd, I'd moved in here to, in, in Perthley, I uh, fell ill with a, with a fever. I'd lost my sense of smell. I lost my sense of taste. Um, I've had fevers before and, and you know, I, I'll say I'm a bit of a grumpy patient, but I've, I've never, I've never, I'd never lost my sense of taste or smell before. It was such a thing that completely threw me off. And, and I felt quite, you know, panicked about that. Um, the same happened to my mother and also my, my youngest sister. And that kind of added stress just day by day. I would, I, you know, when kind of like reading about uh, experiences that people had where other symptoms perhaps developed, you know, I, I, it, it sounds weird, but I would do things like take deep breaths and like, you know, check and feel myself because um, I, I, I would keep saying, gosh, like, you know, I haven't seen the kids. I so badly want to see them. Like, and, and, and I can't do that. It, it feels unnatural. It feels uh, abnormal. And, and the, the, the best thing I can do is, is not be random physically, which just, you know, again, even just saying that, it, it, it put me in a, in a state of um, not just increased anxiety, but just emotional depression, I would say. Yes. Um, and, and, and I'd say, in a, in a sense, I'm, you know, like many, many of us, of course, you know, I'm still personally working through that. I feel like I'm, uh, that there are things I've learned that I'm being perhaps a, a little bit more pragmatic. But again, this is an unprecedented thing that, you know, those of us living within the planet have not seen before. So, um, so much of that to deal with, um, that, that responsibility as well as the responsibility of, of being, uh, you know, continuing to be a parent, although in absence, um, it, it, it felt like, it felt like something from a dystopian comic, you know? And, and actually that again, you know, really struck a chord with me because in the letter, you say we have to be strong and resilient uh we can't display weakness mm. and, and actually that's how i felt all along as well uh, mm -hmm. as again as a mother mm -hmm. uh, i have to be strong for her children uh, but also in my professional role saying well if mm -hmm. i <laughs> you know if i collapse and you know now you know who, who's going to do this is this is yeah uh, you know this is my you know line of work and i need to do so and then not not feeling well so i think we uh, we all probably feel you know, there's so much pressure on us um, um, in, in this time and people do feel, yeah, you can't display weakness because if you do, then everything around you will collapse or something. But it's, it was just, yeah, really, yeah just expressing that. Um, and, and I suppose, I don't know whether you can say anything about mm -hmm. how we can, because I really like the way that you're talking to your children about this and you're mm -hmm. telling your children, we, you know, you know, we actually are allowed <laughs> to display you know, it's all just too much. Yeah. Uh, you know, and how and how how we strike that balance because obviously children want security and want their yeah. parents to be strong and and protect them, but mm. also you know we, we just need to to be human, not just with the children, with everybody around us. Yeah. So, um. Yeah. I suppose. I mean, <laughs> not really a specific question, but it, it mm. really really identify with that you know i think a lot of people would to varying degrees degree, degrees <laughs> in terms of what what they did um yeah yeah, yeah well no certainly Serena. i think um again you know you're striking in, in interesting points there um of course you know 
COVID kind of added to, again, to some of these, these already occurring experiences which have been going on generationally for a while. But, um, you know, the, the, the experience of, uh, you know, the, the talking about having to be strong, for example, you know, that kind of, that brought me into even the, the mind space to thinking about um, what, what my children have had to deal with in terms of, you know, their, their, the, the, the class they come from being working class, but then also, you know, being black, um, that, you know, that there isn't space to really mess up. You know, as a, as a kid, there isn't as much space to mess up. You know, you, you, you have to kind of grow up quickly. You yeah. have to grow up quickly. And, um, and, and, and if you do mess up, then, then there's calamity that follows, right? This is something that I, I experienced very much as a kid. It's something that I would hope my children don't experience as much. But if I'm honest, it's likely that they, they do feel uh, you know that that weight of of of, of having to, to to grow up or having to be aware to the the, the unfairness of, of treatment that they that they face and so you do you know, tell them that do you say well you know messing up for you is different to mm -hmm. you know messing up you know other other people messing up is that something you you talk oh, yeah. about oh absolutely yeah. absolutely no I you know I'm I'm really I'm as I'm as vocal as possible with them you know some things. I ask them questions regarding and, and you know, and, and I ask them to explain their responses and why they feel the way that they do. And sometimes we'll perhaps even do research around that, but really to give space for them to open up around, you know, their feelings, because um, I think the, the part of the difficulty is, is in there not being space for, for conversation, you know. Um, there, you know, there, there was a little bit of that, you know, in, in in terms of my family but but at the same time i would say you know my mum is like crazy she's like she's badass she's real strong and everything you know her thing she was always very much like well you know if they're hitting you once you hit them back twice as hard or you know like you know you don't have space to to be weak you gotta be you know you gotta work five times as hard as you know your white counterparts they're not gonna let you rest or anything like that um you know things that like you know don't get me wrong instilled within me a uh, perhaps a, a, an ethic and especially a work ethic actually to you know i treat every day as potentially it's it's last and i don't say that in a depressive way but the fact that look like you know life is an incredible thing but things change literally at the, at the drop of a hat right again we think about the obviousness of the, the the virus and what that has done in terms of flipping the world right in, in terms of what we knew loads of things changing forever um you know, I, even having a conversation like this, to me, this is, it's, 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 uh, it's an opportunity, an opportunity to talk about, you know, the, the, the feelings uh, that I have, much in the way that the likes of Ta-Nehisi Coates or even Akala talks about within his book, Natives, you know, the, that, you know, one thing that I'm aware of even in terms of my own trajectory as a, as a practitioner is, uh, you know, my online presence, you know, my online presence perhaps says that I'm, you know this this strong person but then you add race onto that and the fact that i'm a black man that mm -hmm. i'm you know that that you know like if i get affected by something it doesn't really hurt me much which is so far from the truth that it's you know kind of almost unreal so you know something in the form of the uh, the, the 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 writing behind the film was very important in even for me personally to remind myself of, of, of one's own humanity at a time when our humanity uh, has not only been challenged, but in some respects has been, you know, stripped away or, or deformed. I want to, I, I, I mean, I, I, this is really very, very <laughs> profound. <laughs> uh, one thing I wanted to really ask you about to expand on uh, which I found again really in, in, interesting is the it, you talk about vultures parading as journalists uh, mm. in the film. Um, it, just tell us, tell me about that. Do, do, is that do you, is, are you referring to the role of media as a whole? Oh, yeah. Um, in this pandemic or you know before the pandemic? It, just tell us a bit more about. I think it. both, both yeah. really, both. You know, if if we for example take on. Um, uh, what was lightly mentioned earlier on the, the, the Black Lives Matter uh, movement and, you know, 
what I kind of refer to as this point in time of, of, of white enlightenment, you know, um, you know, like you said, Nisreen, you know, those of us, people of color, black people, we've been doing the work for so long. We've been dealing with, with various levels of violence, not simply mm. just physical, but emotional, mental, economical. And then all of a sudden, you know, there's one day in, in May or June sometime where, you know, more and more people are saying, oh, well, this particular day on Tuesday, we're going to post a, a, a black square to, to you know, recognize um, these feelings that might just be plausible. You see, the thing is, this, it, it, it's almost like that thing of like before and then after that thing happened, like in a way that like, you know, there are, there's the experience of, of living before the internet existed and then after the internet existed, it's, you know, and, and, and in, in this kind of similar way, although of course, you know, thinking in a different kind of aspect of, of, of trauma, there was, um, and, I, and I don't think I just speak for myself, but, you know, uh, many other, you know, friends, comrades and so on, you know, there was, there was the massive feeling of, of, of anxiety and, and uh, fatigue and, 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 and sadness and even anger that what were we kind of living in some kind of fantasy land of, of, of explaining and expressing and detailing what we go through, you know, that, that it wasn't real or that we were being too uppity or too angry or too, just too emotional all, all over the place. And then all of a sudden that period where it was like, are you, are you okay? Oh, how are you doing? Oh, I'm sorry. But sorry for what? Sorry for what you've, what, what's been going on for a long time or, or the privileges that, that are afforded by you that myself and many others uh, are, are not afforded. Um, is, you know, again, this is all very, even, even though that happened, uh, you know, earlier on within the year, I, you know, th there's so much to kind of unpack and still to kind of uh, get, get to grips with, which, of which at the center of it, my, my hope, and I do say this as a hope that this, that this moment um, doesn't fade away like, you know, like most hashtags tend yes. to, you know, like, like a kind of festivalesque kind of situation of, uh, oh, well, I'm, I'm doing my bit for the black community by doing this, or I'm not being racist by doing that, or, you know, recognizing things almost like it should, like it's a month or just this moment and then that's it. So, um, yeah, lo loads to unpack there. Absolutely, and I completely identify, particularly about what you say about this, the stories, because we've, it's always about, you know, um, let's hear the stories. So any stories, you know, stories of um, discrimination, you know, um, you know, people, um, uh, you know, I think that moment in time, uh, you know, with the Black Lives Matter, we where, where you know certainly I felt uh, you know that well really we passed that. You can't just listen to stories and then move on. You know, mm -hmm. what's the action? Yeah. You know, from yeah. the story. You know, what's going to happen if people tell their stories? Uh, you yes. know, it's not just about oh yeah, exactly what you just said. Oh, you know, that's that's too bad, and and then move on in the same way. Mm -hmm. And I did hope, like you, that there will be change from that because this has been the state, the status quo, you know, for a while, um, you know, for the majority of people, you know, there, there are, you know, and, and that's what we said in, in, in health and in public health um, in general, you know, we know there is uh, racism. What are we going to do about it? We're not just going to regurgitate the figures over and mm -hmm. over saying, Oh, look at all of these inequalities. Uh, let's prove them to you. Let's prove them to you. Look, look, look at all these figures. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then people kind of debating about that. No, we know we need mm -hmm. to move on now. What are we going to mm -hmm. do about it? So yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Fascinating. Um, I have a similar feeling about decolonizing everything. Yeah. And it seems to be news to people in the last four or five years. Mm. And I feel like, you know, post-colonial people have been crying themselves hoarse for the last hundred years, trying to explain to you what was wrong with empire. It's not a new experience. Um, but yes, it, it, does, it does make you feel really uncomfortable. It shouldn't turn into something just like a festival. Um, I wanted to take it in a slightly different direction now, because what I was struck by was the imagery of um, your son 
I think your yes. your son with his, yes. his kind of astronaut helmet mm -hmm. um, walking through this landscape. And you were mentioning just before the sense of kind of distance and alienation, not belonging. And a lot of the film is about that sense of not belonging. Mm -hmm. And the helmet struck me, especially because of COVID, about the sense of breathlessness, not breathing, the air mm -hmm. being unsafe. Yeah. Um, and in some ways, it almost felt like the, that your son was walking in an alien landscape. So, mm -hmm. um, and it evoked two parts. It evoked this kind of the COVID alienness, where everything is alien and the air is unsafe and we are no longer um, in, in a safe environment. But also, it felt like you were referencing the kind of immigration and being from mm. elsewhere or being seen as being from elsewhere, where you keep getting asked, where are you really from? Yeah. You're from Southampton, no, but where are you really from? Um, yeah, so exactly. this, <laughs> this idea of alienness. Um, mm. So I was wondering if you wanted to sort of speak a little bit about that, about yeah. the helmet, because the helmet no, keeps coming up. Oh, it does, no, definitely. And, and I think it's, it's, it's great that you, that you uh, raised that point, Pretty. Um, for those of you who who are uh, you know listening or watching, I'm I'm not sure if some of you may have seen um, one of the first films within the Relic Traveller series, uh, Relic One. But this is the first time that you see one of the Relic Travellers because there are multiples. There's there's another one that you see in between Relic Two and going into to Relic Three. But of course, uh, my, my my son was the first uh, you know Relic Traveller, and um, and the reason why I mentioned the uh, Relic One, which we released in 2017, was there's a there's a peculiar scene at the end of the film actually, where um, where our relic traveller's helmet has been taken off, but they're using a kind of like breathing kind of mask device, mm -hmm. and and the idea behind that was really to try to emphasise this uh, this land or landscape which has has kind of been changed or it's been you know disfigured as a result of um, you know, uh, in, environmental issues or pollution and so on. And so there was already this, um, this idea that this atmosphere was no longer uh, perhaps like habitable or this idea that, you know, the West is this, the, the space of civilization was not necessarily uh, civil or even, um, you know, looking at the idea of, of uh, the exotic, kind of bending that, bending the gaze of what, is mm. a, a exotic from uh, you know a, a European or white perspective and turning it right back on itself. So um, you know we, we, we with uh, you know my producer of of, of the films uh, Nefertiti Eboshi Shandolf, we we spoke a lot about um, this idea of of exploration and and re exploring uh, these these spaces or these environments and imagining them. Uh, in, in, in a point or time, not mentioned through numbers, but just through what, what can be seen, um, the, the, the results of, of uh, a point in time where um, detrimental, and in this case, you know, uh, racist, nationalist, uh, fascistic ideas um, create a, uh, a closing of, of borders that, that destroy so many uh, points or, or, or should I say pillars on, on which societies around the planet exist. You know, travel, travel is synonymous with the, the development of ideas and culture. It's how we learn, it's how we, you know. Um, so, you know, and, and then I guess going back more into the, uh, the, the detail of the, of, of the use of the helmet, or should I say the MiG pilot costume, because the, the costume itself is, it's, uh, it's, it's an altered uh, MiG pilot costume. And these costumes were uh, developed with uh, the, the, the MiG uh, kind of like jets or fighter jets, which the, um, the, the Russians developed kind of around the, uh, I guess like pre-Cold War, Cold, Cold War era. And so like at the time I, I was looking for, I was looking to create or even alter an, uh, an out, a type of outfit that existed. But the thing that I began with in terms of like an astronaut outfit was that it was too big, too slow, too clunky, you know, and our character would just feel or look like the, the Michelin man, you know, and just, you know, they, they, they wouldn't be able to grab something or, or walk quickly enough to get somewhere. Right. Um, but how I was, I was able to perhaps 
consider the the, the, the plausibility or, or or the potential that that could could exist even as a speculative idea mm -hmm. was the fact of the, uh, the 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 additional history that I'd found out that the uh, the, the Chinese reverse engineered uh, that that Russian technology and so by thinking about the uh, the Chinese presence within the African continent well of course again migration exchanges of, of uh, you know culture and, and technology as a result that that's where for me the uh, the idea of the, the 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 Chinese presence even even is it's something that you know even in the the, the writings or the, the statements for the work it's not kind of made as a hey this is what we're doing with, with this outfit because you know I, I I like the idea of of uh, of creating surprise within within a work you know or that you know there are Easter eggs kind of waiting to, to to be found or, or that are embedded you know so um, yeah that's brilliant thank you um no on that note the, another thing that is very kind of present in your uh film is is, is water and mm -hmm. i was wondering why that was um what was going on with that absolutely absolutely so um again i think the, the this 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 understanding of of uh, of travel of mm. of of uh, the the story of of migration the story of the migrant in and various layers um even even the historical um element of that uh the the, the many stories that that are lost at, at sea at you know through the the, the the transatlantic of uh the the many unnamed uh, human beings that lost their lives through forced servitude um to me was a very important element to kind of you know to 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 talk about but but to perhaps utilize uh, 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 a symbolic process of, of explaining that which is why water appears throughout a range of the uh, the, of, of the, the the relic traveler films the five films that exist but then also the um the, the utilizing of the shell you know the importance of this um this this prehistoric object mm. that again also holds with it um, the uh, you know history and stories uh, stories untold um, one of the things that I, I, I used to love uh, doing when I you know we would take the the, the pound kind of uh, uh, coach from from Tower Hamlets to you know Margate uh, especially or, or South End on sea was you know when we would go to the seaside, you know, finding shells where you could you could hear what was you know what people would describe as the sound of the water or the ocean. Yeah. You know, if you listen to it, you can hear the ocean. Even if you weren't by the ocean, you could hear the kind of sound of you know something moving, right? So you know that that became a a, a very uh, intriguing proposition to 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 explore throughout the work. Um, and that's something I also have, you know, again, uh, Nefertiti, my, my, my producer, to, 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 to thank for that, you know, um, because we, we, we moved back and forth around how, how we would locate this kind of idea, but by using, by utilising nature, by thinking about nature as technology, because I think that's the thing, sometimes when we talk about technology, we talk about things that are, you know, metallic and plastic and, you know, built, but, but there isn't, there isn't the kind of understanding of, 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 of technology that exists or the evolution of, of, of that through, through nature. Um, I, I came up with a silly idea of some kind of device that, you know, some built device that, that the Relic Traveller uses, but um, Nefertiti uh, brought to the table um, her own personal shell, which, which she'd uh, acquired some years ago. And and that kind of married with some of the footage which I'd shot in uh, near Table Mountain in, in mm. Cape Town with the crushed shells. To me, mm. it just, it felt like, okay, yeah, we've got something cooking here, you know? Um, so, yeah. So broken stories. Indeed, absolutely. It's beautiful. Um, I thought, I mean, we don't have a lot of time, but I had a kind of quick question. Um, what does it mean to be a relic traveler? That's a good question, um, and I think it's a it's a ever evolving question, even for me as as you know, I guess the the creator of 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 the project of the stories. Um, 
the, the the relic traveler the relic traveler is is in in many ways a kind of um uh, uh, i guess a cipher or a connector for, for 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 those those that have um made journeys difficult journeys testing journeys um the the, the relic traveler is a is a symbol of this process, but the revisiting of those experiences, those stories, the angst, even, but even the hopes as well, you know, um, as is known within the project, the, the relic travelers are sent outside of the, the AU or the African uh, Union to pick up these, these, uh, these vocal testimonies which have been left behind. And, um, you know, one thing that, tends to happen in a lot of conversations that I've had is, uh, is people assume that, you know, the, the, the relic traveler exists at a point in time of, uh, of utopia. Mm. And that is so far from what I, I planned for the project or even I feel I, I'm even saying, if anything, I feel like there's, there's kind of even a warning even of, of what might or could happen. Yeah. Um, and really at the heart of that is, uh, is a responsibility around the future by mm. making, making a connecting bridge to the past in a way that has never been done before. So I'd say though that multitude of things, you know, re responsibility, um, the, the, the anxiety of, of the untold past and uh, the, the difficult and almost even impossible mission to create a healing connecting point to those those lost and, and untold stories so kind of archiving expedition so to speak absolutely brilliant um so um miss reen do you have one more question before we turn to our audience because i'm sure there are going to be quite a few there i wanted um to um touch on uh maybe quite topical now, you know, what you say about stockpiling and, you know, contingencies for war, but no preparation pandemic. We just heard that the defense budget has, has been increased, you know, at this time of pandemic. Um, and I, you know, wanted to hear a bit more about your thoughts um, uh, around that, because obviously that, that's the thought that I have all the time, you know, how much do we spend on wars or preparing for wars um, mm. that we spend um, otherwise to just improve life for lots and lots of people. Absolutely. I mean, it's, what is it? It's kind of, it's, it's comparing the, uh, the, the, the millions that, that, that's, that's spent towards, uh, you know, child poverty, for example, in, in the UK we're talking about, mm -hmm. right. And we're not, you know, mm -hmm. um, versus the, the billions or even then potentially historically entering trillions that is spent on, on, on wars, on, uh, on, on stockpiling of, of, of weapons. And I think when you, again, it's, you know, similarly to the, the, the point that is made in the letter regarding, uh, the statistics regarding, you know, black people, you know, you can't, you can't hide from that truth or that, that, the, that, that historical uh, truth, which is also contemporary, that the government loves to, the, you know, this conservative government loves to and, and has done historically this, this, you know, pushed out this idea of, you know, being strong and being united and, and, and being in this together when really, well, actually we're not. Mm -hmm. I, I think, you know, I think that, Again, coronavirus um, has exposed that we couldn't be further apart than than we perhaps even thought in in the first place. It's just made a, a, a it's just made it more blatantly obvious the uh, the the haves from the have nots, but also the um, I think the the intentions that our, our, our government has and other, you know, governments, especially Western ones for what they want to, what they want to do with, with society. As far as I'm concerned, if you're, if, you know, if, if, if your priority is not in to looking after the people um, and, and those, you know, urgent issues and not just regarding uh, 
you know, child um, poverty, but, you know, abuse, for yes. example, or even depression, so many things, right? Um, then it says to me, oh, then it says, yeah, yeah. sorry. It sorry, says, I was just saying, yeah. uh, sorry to interrupt. I just want to okay. talk about this because, you know, the, 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 yes, so the message about the defense budget is, you know, in the name of protecting the British people, look at all these, uh, you know, other ways, yes. missed opportunities of protecting, we're in a pandemic. Uh, there are the court, you know, exactly causes. So from the virus itself, but all these other things, you know, that you absolutely, could, uh, you know, protecting our, our nurses and doctors. How many of them have died and and yes. needlessly, right? Yes. Again, it's this. It's, it's all about priorities, and and I think it's safe to say that those priorities are not with the people. The the priorities are with, you know, it's with capital again. You know, yes. uh, by investing in destruction, in violence, in killing. That's yeah. and it's, about, it's about the narrative isn't it because obviously um that narrative is taking up by by a lot of people you know and you know um and 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 um you know politicians do things um to appeal you know <laughs> uh, and, and 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 i suppose that's the most depressing bit rather than what the what the politicians themselves use is that they're, they're doing things to appeal to uh, um, a part, at least part of the population. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so that this is wonderful, and um, I thought we would um, open this up to discussion. We have quite a few people here, and it would be great to hear from the audience if they have any questions. Please um, put your questions in the Q and A box, and we will pick them up as they come. Uh, it would be lovely to hear from you and see what struck you about this piece. While we're waiting, can I ask another question? I want. Yes. I, I also wanted to ask um, Larry because in the film, in the letter, there's also mention of algorithms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, yes, this pandemic is filled with you know, fall to the top with, you know, algorithms and, you know, we just, um, and I just wanted to take, hear your take on that. Oh gosh. Um, it, it, from, 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 from what perspective are we talking, uh, regarding social media? Or are we talking about uh, like, you know, the mutation of data? Thing, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I mean, wow. It's, yeah, it's quite a big one actually. Okay. I'll, I'll try and keep it. Yeah. Big. I think we're getting some questions as well. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah, maybe yeah. I'll, I'll hit maybe back we'll into we'll bring it, it back if someone Yeah, yeah. I, I... yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, oh. so we have one question. Sorry, do you want to? I think anything? I can see it. What is it? Simply, oh, yeah. so, what did your children make, make of Reliquary, Reliquary. to? That's a good question. I mean, all right, so to answer that question, um, and this is probably going to sound a bit macabre, but when I was working on the piece, I, I, I didn't kind of, you know, I didn't speak to my kids on the phone or via, you know, like FaceTime or whatever and say, oh, you know, daddy's writing a letter for you. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would just have conversations with their mother about it. We would talk about writing letters. Uh, she's actually in the process, uh, Haley's in the process of writing a letter for, 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 for our kids. Um, and, and, it, and it's very similar to the process of when I work in general, even though, even when, you know, I cast my son Sinai as, as the relic traveler, I didn't try to place the weight of responsibility onto them, you know, mm -hmm. so my, my hope actually is that they come across it rather than, you know, like it's yes. something, it's something for them, but for them to come across rather than, hey, Go and, go and watch this. <laughs> this is your homework. You must, you know, um, and, and it's something that I, you know, even in my career, my profession, I, I try not to do. I try not to, you know, put the weight of, of the art scene on my kids in the sense of like, you know, taking them to loads of shows and things. I mean, we do things as a family, but, you know, we go to, we, well, before, you know, cinemas closed, we, we went to the cinema much more. We would go to the park much more. Not that we wouldn't go to galleries, but again, um, you know that it again it's it's this idea of legacy that legacy is there and 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 that belongs to them and it's there for them to take when when they find the, the interest you know otherwise i would feel like i'm 
forcing that down their throats, you know. But again, I, I feel in a way, you know, that letter exists through the conversations that I have with them, the, the, the moments that I share with them, the messages and, 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 and even the, the, the learnings behind, you know, whether I've done something hopefully well or even when I've made mistakes, you know. I hope that answers the question. Um, and Jane Chalk responds, that's interesting, makes it very powerful for you and the family. For me, it makes the artistic idea complete. Thank you. Thank you. Really, it's, uh, it's really funny because while you're talking about not forcing the film on them, I, uh, with this pandemic at the start, I was doing uh, a lot of media, you know, talking about COVID-19, which I wasn't used to. Um, so I used to force my children to watch the interviews. Yeah. <laughs> tell me what they think. Like, I used to tell me, do you understand what I'm saying? Because I want you. And, and now I've stopped and they ask me, so, oh, have you stopped doing that? I said, no, no, but I'm not, I'm not asking you to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy knows how to do this now. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> they made me feel really guilty now. <laughs> oh no, totally. Well, you know, what one thing that I will say that I, you know, that that both myself and Haley would, you know, that we implement in within the kids' lives is, I, I, you know, in a way we we did that before. You know, coronavirus was 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 a thing. Is is just hygiene, really. You know, so you know if when, when I would take the, the the kids to some of the other karate sessions that we had, just constantly making sure they're not holding on to rails and if they do then look you know get that sanitizer out or you know like just not just be being careful around the things that they're touching and that you know how that might make its way into their systems and so on that that i think is the thing where it's like no like you got to understand this right <laughs> um you know everything else i think it, it it is more in a sense kind of like open which again uh i, I would just hope that with, with the work that we're doing with our kids that it, it becomes a, a, a conversative process that they, where it actually is genuinely digested and not just kind of flows right through and they didn't really understand anything. We're waiting for a few more questions. Should we go back to the algorithm? Because I think there's something <laughs> that, you don't have to talk about algorithms, I think yeah. that's, Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. Only, I think only because of, you know, my scientific background. So obviously I got attracted to that work. You know, <laughs> I <should be> there. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I mean, you know, the, um, I guess one of the interests that I have in terms of, you know, uh, algorithms is perhaps like the, 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 the mutation of, of them towards uh, society through things like social media, you know, mm -hmm. so our, our behavioral patterns or the way that things kind of uh, change as a result of that or, or the way that kind of interests are kind of like brought in as the next new thing. And then, you know, that's the thing we kind of like focus on for a while. And, um, and, and again, how it just, it makes its way back to, to, to the lives that we're living. And, and, and especially at this moment in time, we, we're kind of, because we're inside, we're in, in limited spaces, right? These, these cubicles of, 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 of sorts. Um, but also understanding that, you know, the, if, if you really want to go deep with it, that algorithm, you know, in a kind of science fiction level, um, mm -hmm. historically is, is, has lived through the institution of, of racism itself. You know, um, it, it, it's, it's, it, it's not simply coincidence that someone such as myself would feel um, very alone on, on um, my BA or even my MA when I was studying mm. as a result of the type of environment that is conjured that is that tells me that some of the things again that I I'm either paranoid or what you're thinking of isn't necessarily art but it may be low arts for example you know where for me came about my 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 understanding but I never had the language perhaps for it at the time of you know the colonial process of learning you know, one which didn't depend on the institution. It didn't depend on pedagogy that was brought through the institution, but was, uh, but was followed through my own natural in, in inquisitiveness to uh, consider the, the, the experience of the world around me, but also the, the various aspects of culture that I grew up with that, that were and, and are art forms. 
Um, we don't have any more questions. Um, I just, I, I also thought that algorithm is also about dehumanizing people. It's the same thing as statistics, isn't it? And, but at the same time, right now, algorithms feel like God in the mm -hmm. sense that they, they determine our attention, they mm -hmm. effectively determine how we live our lives, which way we're going to go. Mm -hmm. So it's almost um, in sci-fi terms, mm -hmm. it, it, is, it is the sort of central deity, so to speak, that, that kind of is determining everything. Um, so I, I really, I, I liked the sci-fi element of the whole <laughs> film as well because of that, because there's so many things that can be referenced Mm. through that kind of sci-fi language um, that you don't have time to speak in the 10 minutes and that was fantastic. Mm. Um, and also obviously with the algorithms we all have to remind people over again that, that they can be biased because they're programmed yeah. by people yeah. who, who are biased. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, so. Which, is, which is why I, you know, I mentioned the, the history of, of racism. Again, you know, mm. if we think about, you know, the, the, it's a pseudo, the pseudoscience, right? You know, it's, it's based completely on, on false myths. And that, that's what a lot of algorithms are. They're based on this idea or this set of assumptions. And then if you just feed that tiny little assumption, mm -hmm. even, even when people perhaps like have an argument online, you just see the way that thing just mushrooms, you know? Yes. And, and so it's, uh, yeah, that, 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 those are some of the things that I was, I was certainly referencing through, through that one. Fantastic. Um, I think we are coming very close to the end of the hour and this has been a very, very fascinating discussion and um, I hope we can continue it in other spaces and your work has um, such relevance and is so poignant and powerful with such economy that um, it has really, at least for me personally, been an absolutely wonderful experience just engaging with it closely. Um, Absolutely, you know every yeah every single part of it really compl I completely identified and connected yeah. with it. So you know, congratulations on this piece of work. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, thank you so much for such nourishing conversation and great to be okay. spending time with yourselves and the rest of the attendees as well. Thank you. Brilliant. So that's it from us. Um, I hope you have a lovely weekend, everybody. Thank Cheers. you. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.